First on health matters, research and prevention are two very important parts of heart care. Joining us today now to talk about both is Dr. Frank McGrew, a cardiologist with the Stern Cardiovascular Foundation and the Director of Research. And also, as I might add, one of the most premier, nicest guys uh, that I know. Frank McGrew, thank you for being here. Thank you, Mark. Okay, Frank, uh, you're, you're one of the most outstanding cardiologists in this whole area. And besides treating patients, you're also doing uh, research. And I know that's a, a, a love of yours and an interest of yours. What's new coming down the line for heart disease? Well, all sorts of things. You know, one of the reasons we do research is because we have a lot of treatments for heart disease. We have uh, medicines, pacemakers, procedures, stents, and so forth. But in almost every condition, despite our best therapy, there's still what we call residual risk. In other words, you may get the best therapy for disease, but you still have a three, four, five, maybe 10% chance of having a cardiac event within the next couple of years, despite all of our best therapy. So we're constantly looking for ways to make that better, both to treat and to prevent different types of heart disease. We have a whole variety of different things to do that. We have uh, stem cell programs for muscle weakness. Uh, we have new kinds of pacemakers. We have vaccines to prevent recurrent heart attacks. Uh, we have drugs that block inflammation in diabetics. And then we have a new type of cholesterol therapy that uses an antibody against a protein that's complementary to the current cholesterol therapy that can lower cholesterol an additional 50%. And we think dramatically reduce heart attack risk. Now, how soon is any of this uh, coming to the clinical stage? Well, as with most therapies, it takes a while to get the studies done, it takes a while for the FDA to review them, approve them. I think of the ones we just mentioned, that although we, we have a new type of pacemaker we put in without a lead that probably be available within a year, uh, I think that the next closest probably will be the uh, antibody therapy for high cholesterol. Wow. Now you mentioned the pacemaker. Uh, Dr. McGrew brought some show and tell. Uh, this is a typical looking pacemaker that people would get. And this is the pacemaker. It looks like a treble hook that you'd get on a fishing lure. But this is the pacemaker that you're talking about that yes. has no leads. That's correct. Uh, the normal pacemaker is put in by putting leads through the uh, uh, vein into the right side of the heart and they just sit there they're like a wire and then the battery sits up here in the chest under the collarbone mm -hmm. that's a typical pacemaker uh, a few uh, people not all are candidates for what we call the leadless pacemaker which is uh, the size of a small bullet that's put in on a wire into the right side of the heart it becomes affixed to the heart muscle and stays there then the wire is removed so the only thing left in the patient is this little uh, micro device which has both battery function and pacemaker function and intelligence within it. We can talk to that with a computer on the surface of the body, tell it how fast to beat, when to beat, and so forth. And you can check it to make sure it's working well. Incredible. Now Incredible with not having research. the wires there, that means that there's nothing to interfere with the function of the valve above it. Mm -hmm. There's nothing to go up here and get infected, nothing to cause discomfort. So for a certain subset of patients who need a pacemaker, this seems to be the wave of the future. So this can be put in and go home with no... The next day? Next day. Now, uh, we, we talked about all the new things and research that are coming and the things that you're studying. Uh, let's talk a little bit of grassroots things about how do we prevent heart disease uh, before we get to the stage of needing a bypass or a pacemaker. What are some of the things that if someone's out there today mm -hmm. saying, man, I, I want to make sure I don't have heart disease, what are some of the things that we can do as far as prevention? First of all, we want to reduce what we call the risk factors. Those are things we know that uh, characterize certain people and describe that the fact they have an increased risk of developing heart disease. For example, if you smoke, that can tremendously elevate your risk of heart disease. That, you need to stop that totally. If you have high blood pressure, you need to get that treated. Uh, if you have diabetes, you need to get that treated. Uh, if you're overweight and sedentary, don't exercise, do all those. One of the, the areas where we've made the most uh, improvement, I think, the last few years is deciding when and how to treat cholesterol. We've come a long way. We used to think that the so-called uh, high-density cholesterol or HDL, or good cholesterol, was protective. We now know that's probably not the case that the LDL or the bad cholesterol probably is a major offender for causing uh, arterial blockage. Now the current guidelines for uh, cholesterol management uh, indicate that if you have diabetes or if you have kidney disease or if you've had vascular disease of any type, uh, 
that you really need to get that bad cholesterol below 70 milligrams per cent. What is not really well characterized, but which I think we've uh, begun to really understand and treat better, is the ability to identify what we call subclinical heart disease. In other words, in order for your heart to manifest itself in symptoms, you've got to develop a fair amount of cholesterol blockage. You have to block up like 70% of the opening of a heart artery or more. And up to that, you may not feel anything. And that's why people we know have all felt good on Monday and die suddenly Tuesday. It's because that plaque in their, within their artery suddenly changes from 70 to 90 because of clot forms. So we now have ways of picking that up early. And one of the tests we use is called a calcium score. It's a special type of CAT scan of the chest. It uses a little more radiation than a chest x-ray, but not a whole lot more. It can actually pick up calcium in the wall of the heart artery. So these arteries on the surface of the heart are like a, a garden hose. And with that test, we can pick up calcium in the wall of that artery. And you see if there's calcium, there's cholesterol too. So if we identify that, that tells us that that patient has an increased risk of heart disease and developing a heart attack or other cardiac symptoms within the next few years. So for people that, that live in fear, uh, especially with men, sometimes they won't go to the doctor, but they live in fear that they may or may not have heart disease, they can go in and see their primary care doctor or see a cardiologist and get these painless, non-invasive tests and find out whether they have disease or not. Right, and I think it's important to pick this up early because if you look at 100 people that come into a hospital who have a heart attack, the majority of them will have an average cholesterol level for their age and sex group. They won't be particularly high. And if you live in Western society, um, not a third world, and unless you have some other disease that occurs earlier, you probably will develop arterial sclerosis or arterial blockage. You may be 60, 70, 80, 90, but you probably will get it. So picking it up early, treating it early with aggressive cholesterol lowering, aggressive blood pressure control, and aggressive uh, program to quit smoking, all those are very important to stop the blockage of cholesterol. There are genetic studies that have shown that if you're born with a collection of genes that gives you a lower cholesterol, that at age 60, you're much less likely to have heart disease than if you had a bad collection of genes that where your cholesterol was 20% higher. So really your risk of developing heart disease is whatever your cholesterol level is multiplied by how many years you have that. Mm -hmm. Well, we just, on this month's show, we really want to emphasize the point of prevention we don't want you to get to uh, heart surgery or a stent. We want to try to, as Barney Fife would say, nip it in the bud in the very beginning. And as Dr. McGrew just said, the way to do that is controlling cholesterol and high blood pressure and diabetes. But you've got to go and get that checkup first to make sure that you're okay. Well, thank you so much for being here, Dr. McGrew. Thank you. Next on Health Matters, we know doctors are working hard to educate patients and the community about the dangers of heart disease. But what are other organizations doing? We're back with more information about heart disease.